Welcome back into ARC Seattle. Flu season is fast approaching and with it comes the annual push by public health leaders to roll up our sleeves to get the latest flu vaccine. But now scientists at the Allen Institute are learning more about why vaccines can trigger a weaker response in some older adults and what could be done to improve them. Steve is down in the ARC Lounge this morning with Dr. Claire Gustafson, an assistant investigator at the Allen Institute and one of the lead authors of a brand new study. Steve. And this is such a timely conversation, so I appreciate you coming in. And uh, we're talking about vaccines as we sort of gear up for flu season, RSV season. Measles has been spreading, of course, and the common cold, which I've gotten in the past couple weeks myself. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a secret that no vaccine is 100% effective, right? Um, and the whole idea of this research, I understand, is to uh, make more effective vaccines. And I, I think this was the largest study of its kind. What did you guys find with this? Yeah, so this study was really interesting because what we really wanted to understand is across age, how we can understand the immune system and why vaccines become less effective as you get older. Yeah. And so that was the basis for what we started the study on and asking our questions about. And particularly those who might be over the age of 65, right? Yeah, so our study actually looked at people right before that older age group in order to understand the start of that um, dysfunction or less functional immune system. Okay, and in, in a, I know that science can, can come with, get kind of complicated in terms yeah. of an explanation <laughs> yeah. sometimes, but what were some of the main takeaways that, that you found in terms of the efficacy of vaccines and maybe what, why that might wane a little bit as you get older? Yeah, so really what we found in our study was that although the vaccines work good, they don't work as well as they could mm -hmm. because we have this underlying change in the function of our immune cells that alters how we're now responding to the vaccine. Okay. Yeah, so now that we've identified this problem, there's actually the potential for us to target it to actually make current vaccines work better in older people. And that leads to my next question, which is the whole idea is how can we bake more effective vaccines? So in your view, you know, having been involved with this research, how does that happen? How do we make vaccines more effective? You kind of hone in on that particular area that you were just talking about? Yeah, okay. so really, you know, when we identify that these cells are different, like a cell in a young adult is different than a cell in an older adult, mm -hmm. and we identify why. Now we can utilize tools that we have. In vaccine world, they're often called adjuvants, okay. but these are factors you can add into vaccines to make them have different functions. And so now we can fine tune vaccines with these um, ingredients, I guess you could say, if we're talking about cooking, yeah. and actually tailor how these vaccine responds in different populations. We can make them work better in older people, we can tune exactly what they're doing, and it's, I think it's a really exciting new field for science and vaccinology to be moving into. What do you think the timeline would look like with that? So uh, I don't really evolving. know, yeah, yeah, okay. it's ever evolving, How'd I don't really know? know the timeline, but yeah. I think what's really interesting is with, you know, the COVID pandemic and how science and clinic and pharmaceutical came together to really push forward vaccines yeah. there, we now have better tools to allow us to do these type of processes much faster. Is there anything that surprised you about this or was even the outcome surprising about this or is this something that maybe you might have expected with the results? So I think what we were expecting is it might have been more of a numbers game that was changing the outcomes of the vaccine and really although there are number changes in immune cells, they change in frequency with age, it was actually the underlying wiring of the cells themselves that actually associated with um, lower outcomes for vaccine efficacy. Okay, and do you think this research can maybe extend beyond aging research? Yeah. In a way, how so? So actually what we see is this is a baseline change that happens in older people, and so really this can actually be important for when we think of uh, interventions in the clinic, if we're thinking about immunotherapies, immune cell-based treatments, we actually now know that we might have to fine-tune these treatments differently across ages as well. Fascinating. You guys are doing such great work over there. Oh, thanks. I always appreciate it coming in. <laughs> Was it really the pandemic that kind of prompted this, this research into this particular study? And, and obviously there was a lot of talk about vaccines during that time, um, and a lot of people were hesitant of rolling up their sleeves. But is that kind of what spurred this, this work in the first place? So actually, this work started before the pandemic. Before, okay. And so we actually started this collaboration with Ben Arroyo Research Institute, also here in Seattle, yeah. to study flu vaccine across age, and uh, actually just the immune system over time in people of different ages. And what ended up happening is 
COVID happened. Mm. And so we had this pandemic. Kind of stalled that little work a little bit. Well, well and actually what is start. amazing is that our collaborators, both the research scientists, clinicians, and participants stayed in the study amazing. throughout the pandemic. And this is really how we were able to get this type of work done in this fashion and as rapidly as we did. Fantastic. And I love how it's just kind of pushing science even further and will lead to change, not just with vaccines, but probably the process of aging too. So it's really exciting. Yeah, that's our hope. Congratulations on your work. Yeah, thank you very much. Isn't this fascinating, Tyra? <laughs> is absolutely fascinating research. Thank you so much, Steve. Of course. The study was published in Nature. To read more about it, use your smartphone's camera to scan the QR code in the corner of your screen. The link that pops up will take you to comonews.com. From there, you'll find the link to the study, thanks to the Allen Institute for joining us today.